my All God, right. I do wish that we could, like in uh, Men in Black, if we could just hear what Henry's voice would be. <laughs> I, I mean, Daphne and I have a Henry voice that we use to talk for him, but. Can we hear it? Yeah, um, let me see how does it go. <laughs> hey guys, I hope you have a, re- <laughs> a really good swoon podcast. I don't understand anything that you're talking about. That is about, not the sexy bed voice. But I do <laughs> love pleasure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, whatever you're doing. You could do dog voices all day. <laughs> I'm Julie Jeske. I'm a licensed professional counselor specializing in intimacy, relationships, and sexuality. Hi, I'm Gina, and I'm a relationship coach and a retreat leader who supports non traditional couples all over the world. We are going to normalize and give people better information about sex and relationships. We want more people to have tools to create dreamy, connecting partnerships. We're going to talk about sex, desire, trust, intimacy, pleasure, and communication. We're going to talk about the most common things people bring into our offices. And we're going to give you tools that can help you take action in order to create a relationship that will make you swoon. This podcast is for anyone who wants to experience more pleasure, joy, and connection with themselves or others. We're going to talk about intimacy and sexuality in detail. Just a heads up, in case you want to listen later. Or with headphones on. Or in your sex dungeon. It's up to you. Hey, Julie. (laughs) Hey, Gina. (laughs) And Henry. (laughs) And Henry, yep. He's very into the topic today. Is he? Oh, good. We'll get some expertise from Julie's dog (laughs) in for everyone today on the Mm -hmm. episode. Yep. If you hear sounds, weird sounds in the background, it's not me. It's Henry, I promise. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, can you say, um, can you tell us again where you came up with this idea for this topic? Because I think it's really good. Oh, yeah. But I didn't know. I didn't know this is where it came from. (laughs) Do you like that? Yeah. It's because on Sunday evenings, Gina and her partner, Ray, do face or excuse me, Instagram lives where they go through her book. And um, there was and I try to tune in while I'm making dinner because there's a time difference. Right. And so I Mm -hmm. typically like put my little phone up on my espresso maker while I'm making dinner. And I watch the two of you and you're so cute. And so wise. And um, you were talking about there. You, you were having conversations about like what happens when you're in conflict and someone gets activated and someone wrote in and said, I have my partner and I have agreements about how we handle things like when we take a break. But they don't always honor the agreements when we're in conflict. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, you know, um, talking about agreements just on its own is a fantastic topic, I think, because so many of us don't make agreements in our relationship until there's a problem, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Until some, like, until my expectation that I thought was set in stone and you agreed to gets crossed, then I want to talk about agreements, right? Yeah. Um, So I wanted to talk about making agreements and then also what we do when agreements are not honored, right? Yeah. And so if I don't have agreement with you and you do something that upsets me, like, I mean, we didn't talk about it, so I can be upset, but like there aren't there aren't necessarily like trust breaches there. Right. Mm -hmm. But if we make an agreement and you break it, that does affect our relationship, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and right, because the agreement's only really as good as the follow through part of it. Right. And agreements are really great. um, But I think so often we think about them like we make an agreement and then that's the end of the conversation (laughs) right and it'd be so great if that's what it was right but like the agreement there's like two ways that I think about the follow-through part that's so important there's accountability if things don't go the way we expected or if they it doesn't happen at all or right like that part and then there's also I'm sure you see this too but like there's this part of follow-through that is like praise recognition and gratitude for when it works that we Ah, I also don't see people do I don't see them do that either yeah you know like think about how often we work with people to change dynamics and then they start doing it and they're like okay well we're fine and you're like cool but also I want you to name how are you what's helping you be fine now right because if we're not honoring it it's really easy to forget or to slip back into old patterns or you know not to even realize like, oh, that thing I did actually impacted you. You feel relieved or more right. trusting or there's more ease in your day because I 
followed through on the thing I said I would do. Yes. Right? Yep. Or I feel more yeah. secure in our relationship because you're following through in the way that you said you would. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think about in conflict, I just had a conversation with a client who was like, gosh, I'm feeling more hopeful. It's not mm. like our conflicts are totally resolved, but I feel like a little bit more hopeful now yes. when we're having them just because of this slight difference. Right. And if we don't stop and recognize that piece of follow through on agreements, I think like a lot can get missed. That's a right. really important part. Yeah. 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 Can we just talk a little bit about what relationship agreements are and like the areas yeah. people might have agreements in? Does that yeah, make sense? Have, yes. And thank goodness that you want us to get clear about that because, <laughs> wow, <laughs> there are so many of them. There are and so most many. of them yeah. go unspoken. So we yes. end up with all these unspoken expectations. Yeah. And then I get resentful of you because you're not doing things the way I expect you to. Right. But I've never said it. And you've never said anything. You know, like. Yes. And there's the big miscommunication right there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while and, you know, we're we're getting ready, you know, in the next couple of weeks to record our 100th episode. So we've been around for a while now. <laughs> you've probably heard us use terms like default monogamy, default communication settings, right? Like we all mm -hmm. come into relationship with our ideas of what is typical or what is normal. Right. And we mm -hmm. often expect other people to have the same expectations or the same belief systems. But unless we actually communicate about them, we can't truly know what someone is expecting in terms of mm -hmm. how we are going to operate within our relationship. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I think a lot of times we think about agreements, there are really big ones like uh, how do we how do we maintain our monogamy? Yeah. Or there are or like um, what does marriage mean to me and you? <laughs> Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then there are these there are like little day to day ones. Right. Like I sometimes tell my clients who um, come to me and are like, we're into power play and we want to do a 24 seven. And we think that might be weird or something to other people. And I'm like, no, everyone is in a 24 seven. <laughs> Just some people <laughs> negotiate it really yeah. is the big difference, because like we do, we have all these like ways that we exchange we do a dance all day long if we're in um, heavily enmeshed partnership or like, you know, yeah. close partnership. And we we don't often talk about it enough. So like yeah. I think about there's agreements. I was just going to start writing like a list good. of like, what are the agreements I'm Ray and I have done today already? Oh, and one good. of them we have is um, he feels nervous if we don't say goodbye um, ah. before one of us leaves the house. Yeah. So we always say goodbye or text goodbye when we leave somewhere. Right. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's not like the mo it's not like um, something that might end our marriage, right? Right. Um, it's not like a huge betrayal, but there's like little hurts or little anxiety that might come up. And I know this. He likes to have a goodbye before we leave. So, um, right. I have one from my family. If he's making food in the kitchen and doesn't offer some to me or ah. ask me like, "Hey, do you need something? Do you want something?" I, I will feel like left out and not cared for, right? Mm -hmm. Even if I'm not hungry, I just want him to yep. offer. And yeah. so we have an agreement. Like we've said over the years, like now I know that's a thing for me. He knows that's a thing for me and he'll just offer, right? Uh, yeah. um, and like, so those are teeny tiny little agreements yep. that don't come up every day. We're not going to file for divorce over them. But if over time, if there's day after day after day where I'm not saying goodbye to him when I leave and he's not offering me breakfast when I'm he's making breakfast, right? Right. Like, I will slowly start to feel like he's not thinking of me. He doesn't care. He'll start to th feel abandoned or left or whatever comes yes. up for him when I'm not saying goodbye. And that erodes the trust in little ways over day after day after day. Yep. That's why we want people to get more yep. explicit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, how's that for an example, girl? That's great. That's great. Yeah. And I think I think <laughs> often when people think about agreements, they don't think about these small ways that we agree to honor and take care of each other, right? That we mm -hmm. agree to prioritize each other's experience, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, to be honest with you, I didn't really think about agreements um, as clearly as I do now until I started working with folks who are in non-monogamous relationships. Mm -hmm. Because 
or folks who are in the kink, you know, are into like kinky sex, right? Because yeah. there's such great examples. Uh, I mean, of course, there's not great examples in all areas of life too. But I often was seeing people coming in with like, here are our agreements, right? Mm -hmm. Here's what we, here's what's okay for me. Here's what's okay for me. Here's what's not, right? And then working with folks who are more monogamous, who mm -hmm. keep, you know, getting upset because someone's like, talking to an ex or um, flirting with someone at the grocery store or, you know, it's like, but it's, but, but that's okay. Cause I'm not cheating on you. Right. Mm -hmm. um, really helped me realize like, we need to be talking about what is okay or not okay in all sorts of areas in terms mm -hmm. of like, yeah, monogamy versus non-monogamy or anything <laughs> in between, you know? Yeah. Um, Privacy is one that I see oh, come up that's an a awful big lot. One. Like, do you read over my shoulder when I'm reading a book, or do you know what's on my computer screen? Do we have each yeah. other's uh, internet passwords? passwords? Do we open yep. each other's mail? Right. Um, if you overhear a conversation of mine or not, like that kind of privacy boundary comes up a lot, whether you're sleeping with other people or not. Yes. Right. Like that comes up what in all mine? relationships. Or like around yeah. masturbation or what I like, mm -hmm. what I watch or listen to or think about while I masturbate. Like, is that mine or is that something we talk about or share? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Parenting um, think, agreements and like childcare agreements. Is yeah, a let's big. talk about that for a second, <laughs> right? Like, and that's another one I see a lot of people not discuss enough, yes. right? Um, I just finished, maybe you suggested this to me, but the book Fair Play, do you know that one? No, but you told me oh, about it and I just it put it on hold at the library. so good, but it's a okay. process that someone came up with to talk about how we manage running a household and often co-parenting. Um, that that helps us be more explicit about a lot of the defaults and the usually unnamed things nice. like who's who's in touch with our kids teachers and who knows which snow boots go where on which days and who knows not that this is examples from my own life um and who <laughs> you know who like who just is tracking which pieces tracking? of our life yes yeah um, because a lot of that stuff is really hard um, to kind of measure or observe yeah. if we're yeah. not very explicit about it. Um, and we typically fall into default patterns, right? Yes. Like at your house, you grew up in, somebody right. vacuumed every Wednesday. And so you picked up this pattern where you just vacuum every Wednesday and we moved in together. We never talked about it. And now you're like, why am I the only one vacuuming? <laughs> <Right>? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the person who's not tracking, right? There's like someone who's often tracking the person who's not, doesn't even know what's happening sometimes because mm -hmm. the tracker's doing it so seamlessly, <laughs> slightly yeah. resentfully sometimes though, but seamlessly and invisibly. Right. Mm -hmm. And yes, if we're not talking about it, we don't always know what's happening behind the scenes mm -hmm. yeah the other thing I think about in agreements there's often like a like standards mm. that I think about right like okay. with cleanliness or with like involvement oh, yeah. with our kids lives or involvement with our community or um social time or like um folks will have like sort of a standard in their mind of like how often we should be having sex or how yes. what kinds of sex we should be having how often we should be dating um, or spending time just the two of us right and thinking about that like that's one of the conversations that comes up uh, I one of the words that comes up a lot when I'm working with people like yes do we have an agreed upon standard around whatever the thing is mm-hmm yeah. Yeah. And agreed upon, Gina, agreed upon, right? Because <laughs> yeah. it's like, you may know my standard and you may not agree to it. And then I'm pissed that you're not honoring it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's so many parts of this communication that needs to happen. Not, you know, where we share our wants and needs or our ideals or our ideas. And the mm -hmm. other person does the same. And then we come up with our agreed upon processes right yeah. or um standards if you will right but until they're agreed upon like then there's so much room for misinterpretation and frustration mm -hmm. and defensiveness because i never agreed to that you know or you never told me that right right so what about okay oh oh go ahead can i say one more um yeah. agreements about how we will handle conflict right oh. so like i have a lot <laughs> I wish people or could Or communication. See you. Like yes. how often are we going to text each other in the day and you expect me to get right back to you or is it okay yeah. if I wait until lunch? Like Yes. Yeah. 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 And if we're escalated, do we have an agreement about taking a break and like and and, and mm -hmm. what happens if I don't want to or you don't want to, right? Like or calling names or slamming oh, yeah. doors yes. or pouting, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're talking to other people when we're mad. Like do you tell your sister all the details of oh, our last yeah. 
nasty agreement or that weird sexual thing that happened. And that's privacy a little bit. But like, right. You know, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. So, so communication, now is- conflict, privacy, totally. um, sexual interest, right? Like. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of things that we could build. Parenting, we talked money, about money, how we spend or how we save, or whether I share, <laughs> whether I share with you that I'm buying X, Y, or Z, or whether I just do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Resource sharing, time, mm-hmm. money, spaces, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So okay, Julie. So we, I think we've made our case <laughs> that it's important for people to talk about <laughs> agreements and be uh-huh. um, specific and clear. As much as possible, right? Now, sometimes what I see happen a lot is we don't realize there's like a mismatch in what our assumption is until it's not working, right? Until one of us is frustrated or hurt or resentful, right? So, um, you know, what I would say about that is to start noticing where those little like hurts or resentments and framing it as like, oh, you come at this with a different idea about it than me is different than like, you don't care about our space or you don't care about my time or you're disrespectful or like there's a lot of like um, character assassination that I see happen around this stuff. Yeah. And framing it around like we just come at this from, you know, different backgrounds, different histories about the thing or we're operating under maybe different values are at play here. Like you're wanting ease. So you just left your dishes on the table and I'm wanting cleanliness and order. And so I do not want the dishes on the table. Right. Like, um, but if I come at it from that different frame, there's a little bit more openness to to talk about it than starting from that narrative, that story or narrative that is more like condemning of my partner. Totally. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, But, but you know, I mean, I sometimes I talk about agreements and people are like, "Ugh, I don't want to create a formal <laughs> contract like with business. my partner. I don't want to write it all out with bullet points. It, some people really do. And I know kudos yeah. to you. Right. Um, but some folks really find the like formality idea of it um, unappealing. Right. I don't actually find that the formal agreements are usually that useful. I mean, there's a few, what I tell people is it can be helpful to have a few really formal agreements that are probably not going to change or need much adaptation. Yeah. Um, Like maybe I'm not going to share a mortgage with other people. That's a little uncommon. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Or like... um, (laughs) Or we um, we just don't open each other's mail or we don't poop with the door open or whatever like right. our, our like agreements are. Yes. Um, less likely to change. Um, but the other ones, what I find is like it's more useful to have the skills of how to talk about it than it mm-hmm. is even to know like you have a thing about dishes on the table was my last example, right? Yeah. So how should people bring this up, Julie? Well, I mean, some of these are brought up after it becomes a problem, right? Okay. And so, and that's like the ones I see that people, people creating, I see people creating agreements around conflict around substances, like using, using, like Mm. when you get drunk, we get in a fight all the time, right? Or if you, Mm. you know, that kind of thing Um, around um, exes, you know, I see that a Mm -hmm. lot in like contacting, being in contact with like, I didn't know you were talking to your ex-girlfriend, you know? Yeah. or around, um, yeah, the things people are fighting about. And so it's mm-hmm. like, I would say, at, you know, when you're calm, <laughs> mm-hmm. when you're not in the middle of conflict, coming back and saying, like, let's create, let's talk about this and create our agreement so that we don't have this happen again. This thing keeps yeah. happening. And so let's, like, sit down in a place where we're not activated and talk about, like, what we both want it to look like. Now, a lot of the people I work with really, really love each other and really um, have a hard time naming what they truly want if they're afraid it's different than what their partner wants, right? Mm -hmm. And so I often see people undercutting their side of the agreement. And instead of saying what they really want, they say like kind of what they want or what they think their partner will agree to. And then maybe their partner won't even agree to that. And then they, no one gets what they actually want, right? Mm -hmm. And so I would say like, name what it is you truly want, And know Mm -hmm. that you might not get it, but as you agree to something, you both will hopefully get most of what you want, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I like that, that you're talking about, like, let's do this calm, like, so yeah. kind of removed from the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like while we're drunk and fighting, we're talking about no. how we shouldn't be drunk and fighting, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Yes. But um, maybe the next day or maybe a few hours later or a week later, we're like, hey, so, okay, this pattern's not really working. Yep. Um, the other thing I like that you're talking about is you're like separating out like this thing I observe or this thing that I notice about us. Mm-hmm. Again, it's not blamey. It's not like right. you drink and you're a problem. <laughs> it's yes. like, hey, this th- I notice every Friday at about 8 p.m. we're getting into a conflict. And the other thing that's happening is from 6 to 7.30, we do a number of shots. Perhaps <laughs> <laughs> the shots are not helping us, yeah. right? Like, yeah. um uh, not saying like, yeah, anyway, um, yep. I really think the other thing that's standing out to me is we talked a little bit, um, before about accountability versus agreement making. Yeah. And sometimes I see folks try and do both conversations at once. And sometimes that's useful. Like let's make an agreement about how we do our Friday nights so we don't end up in a conflict. Yeah. And sometimes the reason I'm bringing it up is I want you to apologize for the nasty uh, thing you said last Friday when yeah, you were drunk. Yeah. Right? Yep. And, and not, both conversations are very important. Yes. Um, but getting really clear about what your intention is because the agreement making sometimes can be really helpful separate from accountability, or at least you might want to look at like making sure both sort both of factors. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Both factors are at play, right? Like, um, I don't like the way that our, um, I'm trying to think of one of the examples. Oh, I don't like the way I feel when you leave the house without saying goodbye, yeah. right? Would be yeah. maybe what, um, Ray might say after I had done that. Cause that's one of his, um, pieces of, for our, uh, agreements. And I might say like, oh, I'm really sorry that I didn't know that. Right. Like yes. now I know that and I can change. Here's the agreement. We don't leave without saying goodbye. Right. 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 Yeah, but that's kind of like addressing both, like both, the accountability right. and the agreement. Yeah, because yeah. agreements are often for the for the future interaction, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like in the future, here's how we're going to handle or from now on, here's how we're going to handle it. When agreements are created because of conflict, right, or because mm-hmm. of resentment or disappointment, taking care of that conflict, resentment, or disappointment separately is important. And separately, like Gina's saying, doesn't have to be a separate conversation. But if you're only going to do one, both things need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. I need to address the fact that I call you names when I'm activated and like apologize Mm -hmm. for that. And then create our agreement moving forward. Now, what happens, Gina, when people, when one person wants one thing and the other person's like, I can't, right? So it's like, let's say Mm -hmm. Ray was like, I want you to say goodbye. And you're like that. I'm just never going to do that. Then yeah. what? Yeah. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I'm rushing out of the house. I don't tend mm-hmm. to plan in advance. So I'm like just getting out of here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or it's so not not my important to me. Right. That I, I don't, don't care think about of it. it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so then what is your question? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well, I'm curious what you're going to say about this. But um, <laughs> I could think about like, is there. Are there ways that can help us meet in the middle? Like, are there tools or structures we want to put in place? Like, do Mm -hmm. I want to have a little reminder from it, like a stick of post-it note on the, on the car, uh, steering wheel that says like, say goodbye to your sweetie. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do, you know, for us, I mentioned this, but like sometimes it can't be in person, right? Like, actually, I just heard him leave while we were were recording. This is what made me think about it. And I'm pretty (laughs) sure there'll be a text for me that's like, hey, bye, I'll see you later, you know. Whatever. Yep. So, you know, is there a way to like make a little bit more room in the agreement so it's not like one specific rigid way that we do things? Yeah. What else would you add about when it feels like somebody is asking for an agreement and the other person's yeah. like, I don't know or yeah. no. Right. I mean, that's when I'd say get a third party, right? Mm -hmm. Like to help you navigate this. And sometimes, I mean, you already named this about your, uh, about like someone in Ray's position. Like it's not just about finding me and saying goodbye. It's about letting me know that I matter. It's about letting me know, like not feeling abandoned or, you know, whatever's Mm -hmm. going through our minds, you know, or or like, you know, I have worry, like every opportunity is like our, you know, like I want to honor every opportunity between us. Like what if something happened when one of us leaves? Like whatever, right? Mm -hmm. It's often about something bigger 
than just saying goodbye. And if I know that, if I can understand that, I might be more willing to honor your agreement. You know, I think there's two things. One is if, if someone really won't honor your agreement, if they're telling you no, then you've got to decide, can you like, is that going to be, how, what are you going to do if you can't get that need met in relationship? Like mm-hmm. that's a whole, that's another episode. <laughs> that's yeah. like a whole bigger thing, right? Or what if I say, yes, I will honor your agreement and then I don't do it. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty painful. Like if I tell you I'm going to do something mm-hmm. and we make an agreement around it, this is why I see some people hesitant to make agreements because they don't want to be held accountable Yeah. if they can't honor the agreement. Yeah. It feels easier to be like, well, I just don't agree to that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and sometimes I, um, you know, I think about like with, um, I have a lot of people who like, you go out with your friends and we're not even non-monogamous. You're just out with your friends. And I worry like, when are you going to be home? When are you going to be home? When are you going to be home? Should I go to bed? Should I make dinner? Are you going to, are you okay? Blah, 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 blah. And so, and you feel like I'm a crazy person worrying too much. You know, I see this dynamic. Yeah. 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 Or I have a curfew. I see it all the time too. You're being controlled. Um, Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what I often say to the person going out is pick a time that you know you can be home by, right? Yes. Like, so that it's not like you're being assigned a time by me, yeah. the at-home partner, because that might feel controlling or limiting or stress you out of like, oh, shit, I got to watch my watch all night and right. watch my phone to see, is are they texting me? Is it time? Do I have to get home? But instead, like, if you know, okay... I could probably cut myself off and be home by midnight. Then I would tell my partner, I'll be home for sure by one. (laughs) That way, if, you know, the conversation goes late or, you know, there's one more thing and I'm, you know, I'm like really talking about this thing or if I, if the show isn't quite over or whatever, I get stuck in midnight traffic, whatever. (laughs) Um, I, you know, there's like a buffer there and I'm not letting you down. It's an agreement I know I can uphold on my end. Yeah. Right. Um, And that way I'm not breaking trust by making agreements that I probably can't reliably follow through on. But if I'm home at 1230 or if I'm home at midnight, but I had that buffer room, then I'm not breaking the trust of saying, you know, I'm not like risking it sort of. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a big thing because when we make agreements and we don't honor them, it does affect our trust. Yeah. You know, and like the thing, you know, things happen, like things happen. Like, you know, good, wonderful partners and lovely human beings. There are accidents, there are mistakes, like things happen, Mm -hmm. right? But when I make an agreement and I consistently don't honor that agreement, that will affect how you view me and how Mm -hmm. safe you feel in our relationship. Yeah. I'm going to just like pause for people to write that one down. Go ahead and pause. (laughs) Hit the little 10 second rewind (laughs) thing for what Julie just said. Uh, Um, I think... You know, the other part that I see with agreements where people feel like trapped by them or like stressed out by agreeing to them is they 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 we think of them as like super permanent. (laughs) And and if you're going to be with somebody a long time and for most people, the goal is to be with this person a long time and to keep being with them for longer. um, Then what's great is your relationship's going to evolve. And so are your agreements. And so you make a set of agreements. And I often think about it like a science experiment. (laughs) Like we're going to, what are the like all the variables and factors for our little Petri dish science experiment of this week? Um, This thing is going to happen or the next time you leave the house or the how we put away our dishes or whatever the thing is we're making the agreement about. We tr- test it out for a week or two yes. and then we check in like, how'd that go? Well, you know, the forks really, I'd prefer them over here or the, you know, like that one time I didn't know where you were or what, like, okay. Then we like tweak it. We tune it up. We get better at it and we do it again. Right. I love that. Um, and so they're, they're not a rough draft in the sense that like you are not held to them, but they're right. a rough draft in the sense of like they're wor- a working document. Right. Yes. And if your relationship is going to be together a long time. A lot of it is a working document. Yeah. That yeah, keeps we evolving. change. We're supposed mm-hmm. to change as we grow, as we age, we're supposed to change. So sometimes our agreements need to expand or contract as we do as individuals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that sh- what I'm also offering that as is like the pressure from somebody who might feel like, oh, if I agree that I will be home this weekend at 1 a.m., does that mean forever and ever, right. whenever I always leave the house, I have this 1 a.m. curfew? Yeah. Well, 
no, bud, just this yep. weekend, <laughs> we're going right. to test that one out. Yeah. And then who knows what'll happen, you know, yep. but, um, but like, let's test that out and build the reliability in there and build in this process. So you feel confident, like we can talk about the, we can talk about our agreements. Yes. Cause that's, that's the, the most important thing. part. Yep. Being able to talk about them, being able to address, like adjust them, you know, mm-hmm. and even if you have a, an agreement, if you know, something's coming up, if we're using the time one that, you know, you're going to an event, that's going to be, you're not going to be done till four or something mm-hmm. big is happening. Right. You get to go to your partner and say, Hey, I know we have this agreement. This thing's coming up. I would like to do this differently. Mm-hmm. And usually people are like, thank you so much for telling me. Thank you so much yeah. for having this conversation. You know, mm-hmm. we have to get in the habit of being in conversation about these things. And that makes it easier. That makes setting agree- agreements easier. It means checking in, makes checking in about them easier. Like everything becomes easier when we have these practices around mm-hmm. communication. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of practices around communication, I don't know if you're ready to talk about resources, but I think we yeah. need to mention your book because I feel yeah. like it's such a good resource for not only agreements, but conflict communication practices around sharing things and hearing things from yeah. and with our partners. Yeah. And you know, we were talking before, like, can you pick out one um, activity that we could have people do? And when I look through it, like, I mean, I, I wrote a good book, y'all. But there's like two whole sections that I would suggest. Okay. So um, if people want to look at section four and six, we'll link to my book on our uh, website, which is therapyden.com slash swoon. Yes. And we'll link to the other one I mentioned, Fair Play, because that's a whole process. Um, God, I listened to the audio book and then I got the cards. Like I got the whole setup because I want to walk so many of my people through this process that they have around household agreements that's really just for household agreements um but we'll link to both of those resources and there's a few activities you could do with either good good yeah yeah Yeah, so your action step then is to get gina's book and start doing some of these (laughs) activities um or um if you're needing more you know more one-on-one support with that, then now's a great time to hire a therapist or a coach. And we'll have mm-hmm. links to more information about that on our website, therapyden.com slash swoon as well. Yeah. But especially around creating practices for our relationship and communication, mm-hmm. having having an additional help, a book, a therapist, a coach, those things will really serve you in these practices. Yeah. You know, can I just say too, like, I don't know if people realize this because so many people found us through the podcast, like through podcasting links about like yeah. looking for like sex and relationship stuff. Yeah. I don't know if people get it all the time that if, that Therapy Den just as a site is where you yeah. can go to just find therapists. So yes. like you don't even need to be going there. Um, like when you're like, if you're listening to us and you're like, oh, yeah. I, maybe I should talk to somebody, then you're already on the right place if you're on our site. Yes. Therapy Den. <laughs> yep. so. And you can search for so many different factors. Yeah. If you know, it's like so often people will contact me and be like, do you know a therapist who does this and this and this and has this? And I'm like, go to Therapy Den <laughs> yeah. because you can filter through so many different yeah. factors that are important to you as a couple or as an individual. Yeah, totally. Okay, good. I just want to be yeah. clear about that. I think that's great. Hey, if people want to find you, Julie, where should they find you? I have a website, juliejeski.com. And what about you, Gina? I am at heygina.com. Awesome. Thanks for listening. Thank you.